Hello everyone. Welcome to Sex Talk with Sharonda. My name is Sharonda Parker and I am your host. Today we're going to be talking about synthetic partners. I hope y'all are ready. Let's see. So I have, let me find the, let me find it. What I, what I want to start off with. I'm gonna get into the um to the the dolls and all of that kind of stuff. But she is with me today because she is representing a synthetic partner. Okay. So basically, a synthetic partner is gonna be anybody that's involved in a relationship that is not necessarily real or realistic. And the reason I decided to incorporate the two is because so often I meet people who are bringing their representative to the relationship. Meaning the person that you with, they don't even really know who you are because you have not been truthful about who you are, what it is that you do, what it is that you like. You have basically joined a relationship and became who you thought that person wanted you to be. So therefore, you are a synthetic partner. Maybe the person that's causing trouble in your relationship is the one that you're pretending to be. The authenticity of who you are is who needs to show up in your relationship. That's the quote that I wanted. Her name is Brittany Broda. Look at that. Maybe the person causing trouble in your relationship is the person that you're pretending to be. Let me tell you something. When you decide that you want to get into a relationship with someone, you can only present your representative for so long. Eventually, the real you is going to have to show up in the relationship. Meaning you're going to only pretend that you get up early in the morning for so long. You're going to pretend that you enjoy going golfing every weekend for so long. You're going to pretend certain things for only so long. You're going to pretend that you're in the church only for so long. You're going to pretend that you're this good girl only for so long. And eventually what's going to happen is the real you got to show up. What made me know that I had to discuss this topic was in my group. I asked the ladies, how many of you have partners that know that you masturbate and it was so many women that responded with that's not their business that's a private matter you don't understand why you have to discuss that you don't ask them about if they masturbate and for me it was a really big concern because if i'm in a relationship a sexual relationship i just feel like i want this other person to know everything about me I want you to know the real me, the authentic me. I want you to know what I like. I want you to know what I dislike. I don't want to, in, in other words, I'm going to give you an example. I am not a rice and gravy type of person. I have never been a rice and gravy type of person. I didn't start eating pork until I met my husband. My mother never purchased pork in our home. She was shocked to see that I had started eating pork when I met my husband because she never raised me to eat pork. But the thing is, I adjusted and I adapted. But right now today, it's understood that those are not my favorite things at all. In other words, I'm gonna have to look and see because that was a note that just came through. Um, in other words, I adapted, but I am a more of a seafood type of person. I can eat seafood every day. I can eat uh, certain fruits and stuff every day. And a lot of times the things that I'm in, the things that I enjoy eating, are they, they expensive, they costly. But those are the things that my mother was able to provide because I was the only child. So I'm saying all of that to say, it's only so long you're gonna be able to pretend to be somebody other than you, okay? You have to come to the relationship with who you really are. You can no longer send your representative because what's going to happen is you're not going to be happy. You're not going to be happy. If you know you don't like going, I'm going to tell you another thing. I 
remember when we were younger and you you know you don't have a lot of money and all of this kind of stuff on the weekends my husband used to like to go by his family house or whatever and i would go by his family house too and it was no it it, it wasn't that i didn't like his family it wasn't that wasn't my issue my issue was i feel like you should be able to take me somewhere other than to somebody's house that was an issue for me but for so long i went along with what it was that he wanted to do every weekend he wanted to go to Alston. every weekend he wanted to go by family house and be a family house all day long on the weekends and this is how he enjoyed spending his time i on the other hand feel like if i'm gonna get dressed and leave my house and want to go somewhere can you take me somewhere other than to go into somebody's house so the conflict came about Whereas I started expressing that I don't necessarily want to go to nobody's house. But the thing was, all the time that I was in a relationship with him, the only thing we ever did was go by people's house. But I had to start expressing the things that I expected and who I was as a woman in the relationship and had to let him know that this is not how I really enjoy spending my time. I really do not enjoy going sit up in other people's house. I could sit in my own damn house for that. I don't want to go visiting. I don't, and, and I had to learn certain things about myself. So what I'm saying is you have to, if you're doing things that you don't necessarily enjoy doing, you have to say that I don't necessarily enjoy doing this. Even down to, this was huge. When I married him, I joined his family church. I got up and I went to his family church. I didn't necessarily feel like the church was a good fit for me, but I got up and I went to the church because this was his family church. But then what I realized is I was getting up and I was going to the family church and he wasn't getting up and going to the family church at all. So then eventually I made a conscious decision to just say, you know what? I'm not about to go back here. I'm not going back here. I don't necessarily feel like it's a fit for me. So I'm not going back. I eventually went and found my own church family. And then he started visiting my church that I joined. But what had to happen was I had to be real and say, your family church is not a fit for me. Sometimes you have to have certain types of conversations with people. If you know that you're the kind of person and you don't like people living in your house and coming and staying the night and all of this kind of stuff, some of y'all have in-laws staying in y'all house right now today because you can't open your mouth up and express how you really feel and say, look, I really don't enjoy that your sister and her children live in here. Like, I need you to create a, I need you to let them know that they have to have an exit strategy. The flood been over. You know, uh, their situation should have been helped by now. I don't enjoy having house guests for an extended period of time. But when you bring the real you to the relationship, the person that you with, they learn you. And they know when their family start calling and asking, can they stay? They can say, nah, I might have to get you a room for a couple of days until you can figure something out. Because, you know, my wife really don't like house guests like that. She don't really like company like that. You know, she like her space. She like to come home and she like to be able to relax without churn jumping all over her shit. But when you have the authentic you in a relationship, the real you, then the person that you with, they know what they're dealing with. They know what to do to please you. And the reason you can't get pleased is because the person you with don't even know who the hell they, they laying down with. Because you can't even share the smile shit with them about you like to play with your pussy. If you can't tell the person that you with that you enjoy your own me time, stimulate yourself with toys, like how, how can I expect them to know anything about you? So the reason I did this video is because I want you to make a commitment to yourself for this upcoming year of 2021 to say, that I am going to present the authentic me in this relationship. If you know you don't like cooking, let your partner know. I really don't enjoy all of this cooking. Like, we got to come up with something else because I don't like standing over the stove in the kitchen like that. Or let your partner know, I don't like gender roles. 
I don't like for you to assign certain things to me because of the gender that was given to me at birth. In other words, we both can do some of this shit. The authentic person got to show up. If you don't like having to foot the, most of the bills in the house and all of this shit, and you're in a relationship and this is going on, a conversation needs to be had and said that, you know, I need you to pull your weight a limo. I need you to pull your weight because I feel like you're not doing enough. Y'all might feel like I'm trying to tear up relationships. Y'all might feel like I'm trying to bring confusion to the relationship, but that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm saying is you have to bring the real you to the relationship. And once you bring the real you to the relationship, you will be a lot happier. See, I believe in whole shit. Happiness over everything. Whole shit. I wish I had my book with me. But I'm reading this book called My Volva and Me. Um, and, and the book is a really good book. But she talks about whole shit in this book. Happiness over everything. Some people may feel like it's selfish. It's not selfish. If you don't do certain things to make sure that you are happy, then what happens is you live your life making sure that everybody else happy other than you. If you would be real with yourself and be real with the people that you are engaging with, then you can have that happiness. Okay? So, now that we're talking about happiness, <laughs> let me talk about all these new jackrabbits that then came out. We have the seven function waterproof one that we have stocked. We have the, this is the original one. Millions have been sold. This one is the big thick one with the beads that rotate in the inside. All of this stuff is right on time for Christmas. Uh, this is another version of the original one. This one's just a purple color. Then we have the Jack Rabbit with the G-Spot simulator with the little hook on the end. And of course it has the beads to massage the inside of the vaginal canal too. We have, for those of y'all that got these little bitty coochies that always be like, oh, it's too big, it's too big. We got these to this one is the petite one. As you can see, the shaft of it is real small. Now, you know, y'all go on here, but I like to feel shit when it's inside of me. I don't like that little bit of shit. Um, and again, this is another one. This is the platinum one, okay? So this is the gold platinum one. This one is waterproof seven functions as well. Another thing that came in today is the Christmas onesies. Y'all want long sleeves and the, and the long ones, they are in. Now, originally they were supposed to have the um, the butt flap where I got them in and the butt flap, the butt part is stitched to them. So, of course, I have to contact the company and let them know y'all didn't send me the right ones. But we do have the long sleeve ones in. Now, I do have other butt flap ones on the sales floor um, in black. And they are long sleeve, but they are short. And you can detach the butt from them. So I do have some butt flaps in stock, but the Christmas ones are not the butt flap ones, unfortunately. But they will go great for your next uh, Christmas party or if you're doing a photo shoot or something like that. Uh, this one here is the back of it says, don't moose with me. Okay, that's cute. And, and this one says, don't stop believing on the butt. Don't stop believing on the butt. So, yes, these are in stock here at the store. Um, and that's going to conclude my live. 2021 will be here very soon. Be real. If you don't do nothing else, you be authentic in your relationship. I'm going to read this quote one more time before I end this live. And it says, maybe the person causing trouble in your relationship is the one you're pretending to be. Maybe the, per maybe the person who causing trouble is the bitch who you pretending to be. I need you to be authentic, be you, and be true to yourself, okay? Life is too short. Y'all see people dying every day, leaving here every day from COVID and everything else. I was up this morning and I was listening to that song, Thank You, Lord, for all you've done for me. I was listening to that song. And I was just listening. It says, I want to thank you for your power. I want, to I want to thank you for your love. I want to thank you for your power. I want to thank you for your protection every hour. 
Them words resonated so much with me this morning because I say, Lord, thank you for your protection every hour. Because every day we come into contact with somebody every hour and we don't know what they're exposing us to. They can be exposing us to our deathbed and we don't even know it. But if you go home every day and you did not contract the virus, you need to be thankful. Because it's real out here right now. It's really real. And everybody should be wearing their mask, okay? All right, but I ain't about to get off into the, uh, the, the COVID uh, TED Talk. I ain't about to do that today. But uh, just be real in your relationship. And y'all be blessed, okay?